So VS Code is usually a software that you have to download, but just recently they actually released a browser version that you can access with this website, vscode.dev. But yeah, that's what this looks like right here, right? And so you can actually just get started. If you make an account, you can save your progress, but we don't need to if we just want to start, go ahead and start. So we can just go to file and then new file. And then it says select a language to get started. I usually do that to make sure I pick the right language. In this case, we're going to be picking Python. And then you can just write something, for example, like print. And then you want to use apostrophes, hello innovators. And so the print statement is just going to be something that's going to display to the console. And we'll talk about what that is once we cover PyCharm. But yeah, usually with this tool, you can just use it as a what we call a text editor, right? And you can save your files and usually copy and paste your code somewhere else after writing it and saving it here. Perfect. Okay, the next tool we're covering is called PyCharm. And PyCharm is something we call an IDE. And what is an IDE? An IDE is called an Integrated Development Environment. And that's what makes it different than VS Code. VS Code is just a text editor. What is an IDE used for? An IDE is used to create software applications from start to finish. So you can see once we go to this website, jetbrains.com and PyCharm, and we download PyCharm, and once we open up, you can see that it's a lot more of a comprehensive service, a comprehensive software, a comprehensive application. So let's go ahead and visit this website and go ahead and download PyCharm. So you want to go here, and then you want to go where it says download. And there's two versions. There's the professional and community. We'll be downloading the community version. This is a completely free since it's the open source version, right? And so this will pop up. You want to go ahead and save, right? You have this right here. And then we'll just wait for a little bit of time for it to download. And then this should pop up. You want to say yes. And then you have welcome to PyCharm. You click next. Choose where you want to install and usually just leave the default settings. I wouldn't recommend messing with um, the path or just ignore that if you know this is your first time just go ahead and create it like this go with the default settings if you just press install and then we'll wait for it to install If you want to start it immediately, you can press check the box here and then press finish. We'll go ahead and start it up. You have this. Make sure you read and confirm. Continue. All right. Now you have this interface where it pops up. We can go ahead and make it full screen. You can go ahead and start the tour. If it, I think I recommend that, um, you know, if, if it's your first time using this. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. But if you just want to start, you can go ahead and press new project, right? And this is um, creating a new uh, environment. That just means that um, when you're coding, it won't mess with anything else in your computer. So we'll go ahead and press create. Oh, and also you can see that um, it tells us, PyCharm tells us that it hasn't found Py Python on our computer. So it'll go ahead and install Python for us, which is super useful, right? If you have downloaded Python already separately, then it'll usually ask you to update, which is also super useful. And then it takes a little bit of time to install and it asks us, do you want to make any changes on your device? You want to say yes. And it's installing the, the latest version of Python. All right. Looks like it's starting. Okay, great. So this is the default text that it gives you. You can go ahead and you know read if you want, but let's go ahead and delete it for now. And get rid of that breakpoint. So same as before, we're going to be doing our print. 
hello innovators. Oops. And you can see that uh, PyCharm automatically knows that this is a print statement and that this is what we call a string inside, right? And then let me point out where our file is saved. So our file here is called main.py. Oh, you can't see it. Let me see. Yeah, right there. It's called main.py right here. And it's saved underneath this directory. So in your computer, you have, you know, users, your name, and then here it's under a file called PyCharm projects, and then under Python project, and then here you have main.py, our, our actual file that we're saving under. And so, oh wait, let me make this smaller again. And so you see that you have that here, and this is the console I was talking about earlier, the Python console, right? Oh, you want to allow access. Uh, let's move this over across here so you can see this. So if you have this print innovators, oh, let's get rid of this tooltip. Uh, move this down, you can't see. Yeah, there we go. You have this print hello innovators. You can go ahead and run the file. So we'll, we're running main right here. You can see here in the Python console what, what pops up. You can see here that that's what that print statement does. It returns us our hello innovators. So whatever you type in here, we'll have it printed out to the console, displayed to the console. Great. So that's the basics of PyCharm. And usually you won't be using this unless you're actually, you know, pretty advanced in your coding journey or if you actually want to make some sort of end-to-end -end application, right? I just wanted to show you guys this in case you needed it in the future. But mostly, we're probably going to be using the next tool I'm going to be showing you for these series of workshops. Great. All right, so the next tool we're covering is something called Google Colab or Google Collaboratory. And this type of coding is what we call code uh, block coding. And the reason why is because versus an IDE where you write all of your code in one file and then run it and the Python console displays it just like we saw earlier this time you'll run your code in different segments in different blocks and you'll see the output right after you run the block right okay so before getting before going to this link you want to make sure you have a Google account I know some of you guys um, with your school you have a Gmail account that's fine that works too so let's go ahead and visit this link So we have this, and then we'll want to make a new notebook, right? Click on that, and then you can go ahead and Python basics one. And so, oh yeah, you see these little guys up on the top. We can go ahead if you if you like the this uh, on your notebook, you can go ahead and go here to settings, and then oh, also there's you know light mode and dark mode as well. And uh, if you go under miscellaneous, right? If you're a dog person or a cat person. You can choose accordingly. And we see the little, these little guys pop up on the top, which is really nice. We'll go ahead and s switch back to light mode just so that you guys can see. Great. And so here you have two options, code or text. So if you do text, let's move this up right here. You can type in just regular text. So I would say Python basics one, and then shift enter. I have that right here. And just like before, we can write print hello innovators, right? And then here, you can either press shift enter to run this lock, or you can just press run cell right here. And then it, it, it shows you um, your code right here that you've just done. Great, and if you want to make another block of code, you can just go ahead and do that and say, print, happy Halloween, right? And then just go ahead and press run cell, or in this case, let's do shift enter, and you can run it that way. Perfect, great, awesome. And then if you ever want to, you know, save a copy to your drive or you want to open an old notebook it's just like Google Drive right here as well great that's all I've got for you guys so have a good one guys bye bye